Hey guys and welcome back to another Renegin 4 tutorial. Today's just going to be a quick and simple one. We're going to be setting up a friendly AI companion. So I might do multiple parts of this if you want to add more stuff to it. If you do, let me know in the comments down below. In this one, we're going to be doing a basic follow system. So the AI is going to follow the player and stay a certain distance away so it's not going to be right up in his face. And also when we sprint, the AI will sprint as well. So let me show you what it's going to look like. We can go in, you can see the AI has walked to us and they've stopped there. And you can change the distance so they can stop further away, stop closer, anything like that. And if we start walking away, they're going to follow us. If I start running, they're going to start running as well. Obviously, I haven't set up the different animations because I just wanted them to be a bit faster. So this is what we've got. So we're running, we stop, they start walking as well. If we stop, they stop with us. So this is what we're going to be setting up today. It's quite good. It's a very simple mechanic that you see in a lot of games, especially story games. They might follow you around, anything like that. So this is what we're going to be making today. So let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done this. So the first step we want to do is we want to create our AI. Now if you've already created your AI, you don't need to do this, you can do it in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate the third person character, or the first person, basically your character blueprint. So for me that's content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character, I'm going to hit control C after selecting it. I'm going to go back to my AI follow folder which I have here, or just your companion, whatever you want, and hit control V to paste it. I'm going to select it, hit F2 to rename it, I'm just going to name it. AI companion. You can name this absolutely whatever you want and I'm going to open it up straight away. Once we're in here we can delete all the rest of the code that we have. Don't worry if you don't have some of this, these are from previous tutorials. But we're going to delete all this code and I'll also delete the other stuff in the viewport which I don't need. For example the camera and all that good stuff there. As all we need here is just the AI itself and the reason we did it from the character blueprint is so we can include the character movement in here like so. So once you've done that we're going to go back to the event graph and we're just going to find some empty space right click and get event begin play. Out of this we're going to cast to our character, for me that's the third person character. But if you use it could be third, first, or if you've named it, but this is essentially the character that you want the AI to follow. So for me that's the third person, and the object is obviously going to be get player character. As third person character we're going to right click promote to variable and just name this character reference so we can use this later on. Underneath this we're going to right click add a custom event and name this one follow player like so. Now with this we're going to hold down B and left click to get a branch plugging that in there like so. The condition of this is going to be the distance from the player. So we're going to right click get distance to leaving the target as self and the other actor is our character reference there. So we're going to be getting the distance between the player and the AI. And now with the return value we're going to get a greater than or equal to so float is greater than or equal to float, plugging the condition into the branch there. And this is where you set up the distance the AI needs to be from the player in order to stop. So if they go below this, they're going to stop moving. So I'm going to set it as 400, but you can set this to be absolutely whatever you like. Just mess about with the values to get it perfect for you. Then off of true of this branch, so if it is greater than this distance, we want the AI to move. So we're going to come up true and get an AI move to. Plugging that in there with the pawn as get a reference to self the target actor as our character reference again there so it's just going to keep moving to the character there. Then we're going to select all this, hit Control c Control v to duplicate it, plugging that one into the false now and now the target actor isn't going to be the character reference, it's again going to be get a reference to self. And So what this one is going to do is it's just going to stop it. So if the AI is far enough away it's going to move to the player and if they're close enough it's just going to move to itself i.e. stop the movement. Then what we need to do after this is hold down D, left click to get a delay, with the duration as 0.1 or 0.2, anything like this is just how quickly it's going to check. And then we'll plug that into just the execution of the AI move too. So not on success or on fail, just out of the top one, as we want to be doing it constantly. Actually I'll up the duration to 0.2, and I'll complete it, I'll call function follow player. So this delay is essentially just going to be checking. So we're constantly checking to see how far away the AI is from the player so that we can then stop moving it when we need to. Now we could use box collisions and stuff like that instead so that when the AI enters the box collision it stops. However that can then mess up a lot of other stuff later on and confuse it for you i.e. that will then also increase the player's collision or the AI's collision. Stuff like that. So this way it's just a bit simpler and helps you understand stuff later on and makes it easier for you then. So I hope that makes sense. Again, obviously you can use a sphere collision if you'd like, but this is the way I'm doing it. I think it's slightly more efficient. So once we've done that, we're going to go back off event begin play and just call function follow player. So then when we start the game, it's going to start following the player. So what you could do is just have this off a button event instead, 
to then call the function follow player and here have a branch. So actually I'll do that as well just in case you don't know what I mean. So now we're going to set it up so that you can choose when and when it shouldn't follow the player. So in between the custom event and the first branch we're going to hold down B, left click to get another branch, plug in a true into that branch, false into nothing. I'm going to create a variable so hit plus variable there and I'm going to name this one follow player question mark. Compile and I'll leave it as false by default and that's what we need to do in there. I'm going to compile, save, if we minimize open up our character blueprint again so third person BP for me. What I'm going to do is now just right click and get a one keyboard event or this can be anything you want but I just want it to be when I press one it starts following. I shall have it as one toggles it on and off so out of the one I'll get a flip flop. A is going to be a reference to our character so A is going to be following it. So what I'm going to do as well is right click get event begin play. If you've already used it you can hold down S left click to get a sequence to fire off multiple lines of code here. But I haven't so I don't need that. Out of this we're going to get all actors of class with the actor class being our AI companion that we have here. Out actors we will get a copy leaving the index to zero and the output we're going to right click promote a variable and call this companion reference like so. So the same way we did a character reference now we're doing a companion reference. Then back to this flip flop here we're going to get that companion ref and out of this we're going to set follow player to true plugging it in A and ticking it so it's true. And then what I'll do is I'll duplicate the set, plug it into B, and then we'll untick it so it's false. So when we press one, we're gonna to toggle on and off the following of the player from the AI. So this will work perfectly. So now what we're also gonna do is set it up so that when we sprint, the AI sprints as well. So just underneath this code, still in the character blueprint, what we're gonna to want to do is right click, get a left shift event, or this comes off of your sprinting code you already have. So I'm just going to create a basic sprint code now. If you already have it, go off of that. Off of pressed, I'm going to get the character movement, obviously, and set max walk speed. Again, this is just setting up my sprinting, first of all. Duplicate that down there, off of released. And what I'm going to do is have it so we go to 1200 when we're sprinting, and then back to the default of 600 when we're not. Now what I'm going to do is get the companion reference there. Out of this, I'm going to get character movement, like so. And now this, I'm going to set max walk speed again, plugging that to the top one here. Now what I want to do is I want to have it a little bit slower. So I'm going to set this to be 1100. So the AI is slightly slower than the player. Now you don't need to do that, but it does help it a little bit. It just looks a little bit better, especially from the testing I did earlier. I found this to be better. I'll duplicate this again, plugging out of there, the targets into the character movement, the speed as 500. So again, it's just a little bit slower. Compile and save that. And this is the code done. What I'm going to do is then also change the companion's base moving speed, so I can set the character movement, and the max walk speed, I'll set that to be 500 instead of 600. So again, it's just slightly slower than the player. So now if we save, compile, minimize, we can test this out, and make sure you've also got a nav mesh volume as well, so AI can actually move. To do that, you go to volumes, get nav mesh bounds volume, and just scale this up to be the size that you want. And a good way to test if it's going to work is if you press P, the floor should turn green where the AI can move like so. If it's red or not green, then it hasn't worked to you. And you need to make sure that you move it or the collision is correct, all that good stuff. So let's drag in our companion and test this out. So AI companion there, we hit play. This shouldn't follow us until I press one. That didn't start following us and there is a good reason for that. What I forgot to do is actually call the code. So if we go back into the character blueprint here, we set the boolean to true, but we also need to call the function. So our companion ref again, going to call function follow player. It's a very simple thing. I just forgot to add that in. Now this should work for us. So again, we try this, hit one, it's starting to follow us like so. It gets 400 units away from us and stops. We move away, it's going to follow us. If we start sprinting, it will also start sprinting as well while still following us. Again, if I stop, it will stop. If I stop walking away, it's following us. If I press one, it should stop. However, it didn't, or it did, sorry, but it wanted to finish off the movement. So the reason for that is it wanted to finish off where it was going first. So another simple way to fix that, so it's good that we tested that out, is here we just move it. So we're going to come off AI companion again, or companion reference, sorry, and get an AI move to. Actually, no, we won't do that. We'll go into the companion here, we'll right click and add a custom event, name this stop movements, plugging that into this bottom AI move to there, which is the one we set up to stop the movement. Compile that go back to our character companion ref we will stop movement so call function stop movements there 
plugging that in. So this is why it's always good to test your code because you might have forgotten something or missed something out and so now we're fixing it like so. Very simple things, just forgot about them. Minimize, let's test this again. Press 1, it's going to follow us. Press 1, it stops following us, so that works perfectly. Press 1, it's going to follow us. When it reaches us, it will stop at the right distance. We follow, it follows. We run, it also runs. Again, if I press 1, it stops following us. So this works perfectly. Again, this is just a basic, friendly AI companion follow code. And if you want more videos like this on a friendly AI companion, let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see, and I can hopefully get around to doing them soon. So again, I think that'll be it for this video. If you've done everything we want to do, we set it up so we can toggle on and off the AI following us, and it will follow us to a certain distance away from us, and it will stop. And if we walk away, it will walk with us. If we run, it will run with us. Again, we can toggle it on and off like so. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like, subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.